How's it going everyone? My name is Jake and I'm going to teach you how to speedrun Minecraft today. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos coming out recently that have been teaching people the wrong way to speedrun Minecraft. I'm going to clear up a couple of those inconsistencies and show you the right way to do it. In this video, I'm actually also going to be using the footage of the current world record speedrun by Caraway, so shout out to him as well. So the first step in Minecraft speedrunning is spawning in a village. You're going to want to spawn in a village, whether that be a plains biome village, a desert village, or a savannah village. These are the best biomes to spawn in as they have the best resources for your speedrun. As you can tell by the world record speedrun, he manages to spawn in a village in the plains biome. Now that you've got a good spawn, there are a list of things that you want to do in this village. One is collect seven to eight beds so you can one cycle the dragon, which we can get into later. Two is collect hay bales and any bread that you find in chests because it actually saves time than rather than killing sheep and cooking food that way. If you're lucky, there may even be a blacksmith in this village which you can use to grab some extra iron, maybe a couple diamonds or obsidian which you're going to be using in your run. After mining the oak logs in some of the houses, you're going to be able to make a crafting table, some sticks and a wooden pickaxe. Use this wooden pickaxe and then mine the cobblestone around the houses to make yourself some stone tools. I'd recommend making a stone axe, a stone pickaxe, a stone hoe and a stone shovel. The stone hoe was actually to help mine the hay bales throughout the village and it saves you a little bit of time overall. You're also going to want to kill the iron golem. If you get three iron, it's not going to be enough for both a bucket and a flint and steel, which is why you're going to be needing four or more. If you're lucky enough to get five iron, you're going to want to use the last bit of iron to make yourself a shield, which will help protect yourself in the nether. To help kill the iron golem, build yourself a pillar of three blocks high and stand on top of it. The iron golem won't be able to hit you on top and it will be an easy kill. To so finish looting the village, you should have approximately four stone tools, a stack of bread, as well as a bucket, and one iron left over. You're then going to want to go find a water source of some kind and pick the water up with your bucket. Fingers crossed there's going to be some gravel near that water source. You're going to mine it with your shovel that you've just made and hopefully grab some flint. After you pick up your flint from the gravel, use it to make a flint and steel and off we go to find a lava pool. Now finding a lava pool is mostly left up to random chance. However, there are a couple things you can do to help yourself find one. First, go into third person mode and have a look from a top down bird's eye perspective. So it gives you a wider range and you can actually see into some of the craters onto the floor without having to run over them. This will just speed up some of your time and you won't have to walk as much. Also, keep an eye out for any fires starting nearby as that will indicate that there will be a lava pool close by. Another thing you can do is head to a desert biome. Desert biomes actually have a higher chance of spawning lava pools, so you're more likely to find one. So you're walking around in your desert biome and you've managed to find yourself a lava pool. Next step is building a nether portal. Now you may think that you need obsidian to make a nether portal. However, you just need a lava pool and one bucket of water. Now to make the nether portal, just copy exactly what Kuroway does. If it's still too hard or too fast to understand, I'll be making a nether portal tutorial in the near future. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that one. Now that we're in the nether, press F3 to bring up your coordinates and copy down the XYZ coordinates in the top left of your screen. These will show you how to get back to your portal if you need to. Now, the first step after entering the nether is mining as much gold as possible. This is because we're going to use the gold to trade with the piglins and hopefully get three different types of items. One, a fire resistance potion, which we can use against the blazers. Two, some ender pearls. And three is obsidian, so we don't have to make our way back to the portal that we just came from and instead make our own, which will save us a lot of time. Now, there are two different ways to get gold in the nether. One is through the nether gold ore, which spawns throughout the nether. And two is by mining the gold blocks, which spawn in bastions. These can be very helpful. However, the bastions are quite complex and dangerous. So if you'd like me to explain how to speedrun those in another video, make sure to subscribe. Now that we've got about 40 to 60 gold ingots, we can trade with the piglins. Trading with the piglins can be a little bit dangerous, so I'd recommend using four gold ingots to make some gold boots, which will protect you from the piglins and they won't attack you. Just don't mine gold in front of them and you'll be all right. The best place to find piglins and trade faster is in the bastion that you've just visited or in a crimson forest. Now, a quick tip to trading with the piglins is by luring them inside a one by two hole and chucking the gold ingots into the hole. This helps by keeping them all in the same place and they do not wander off with your gold and your items. It makes it nice and simple. Now, remember, we are after three things with these trades, 12 plus ender pearls, 10 obsidian, and a couple of fire resistance potions. Now that we've got these things, I'm gonna give you a quick tip on navigating the nether. 
by using a fire resistance potion and then making sure to at least keep 12 pearls you can then traverse the nether by throwing ender pearls it doesn't matter if you land in the lava because you have already used a fire resistance potion you can travel great distances this way now don't forget to keep eating your bread as you do take damage from throwing the ender pearls now that we've found our nether fortress we're going to be looking for the blaze spawner you can have one of two options with a blaze spawner, a closed spawner or an open spawner. An open spawner is a spawner that doesn't have a roof on top. A closed spawner is a spawner that is enclosed in some sort of box so that the blazes do not fly away. You're preferably going to want to look for a closed spawner, but an open spawner works just as well. Now, before fighting the blazes, make sure you drink a fire resistance potion. The only way you can take damage from the blazes now that you have your fire resistance potion on is through melee attacks. So make sure to keep your distance and you shouldn't have a problem. By mining one block around the base of the spawner, you actually increase the spawning rate of the blazes and it gives them more room to spawn in. It's just a quick tip to better your time. While you're waiting for the blazes to spawn, you can do a couple of things. If you're at an open spawner, start trying to make a roof with any extra blocks that you may have in your inventory. Also, use the 10 obsidian that you had to make yourself a nether portal. Now you're gonna wanna keep killing blazes until you get about seven to eight blaze rods and then jump in your nether portal and head back home as fast as possible. Now I've just exited the nether. Now you're gonna wanna use those blaze rods and make some blaze powder and then combine them with your ender pearls left over and make as many end eyes of ender as possible. If you have extra, keeping a couple ender pearls will actually help you traverse the overworld as well. So that can always help increase your time. Having about 14 eyes of ender is usually enough to get you to the end portal room and into the end. Taking that into consideration, start chucking your eyes of ender to locate the end portal. Now, usually on average, the end portal is going to be about a thousand blocks away. So make sure you have enough food to cross that distance. Now, a quick tip when digging down to find the stronghold is actually to look at your chunks numbers. You're going to want to make sure that your first chunk and your last chunk are both on four. You can change these numbers by looking at the ground and moving around. They should go up and down depending on how you move. This should put you directly into the stronghold entrance. A lot of people just dig randomly as soon as their eye of ender goes down. However, this can leave you often being just out of the stronghold range and you're at the bottom of a pit with nowhere to go. If you have more potions of fire resistance, I would recommend using them as you're digging down because you don't want to be falling into lava and ruining your speedrun at the very end of the run. If you don't have any potions of fire resistance, make sure to keep your water bucket in your inventory so you can quickly swap through it just in case you do land in the lava. Once you found your portal room, put your eyes of ender into the portal and make your way into the end. Now, remember how I told you to pick up seven to nine beds in the village at the very beginning of this tutorial? This is where these beds come into play. We're going to be doing something called one cycling the dragon, which doesn't involve breaking the crystals at all, but instead involve blowing up the beds to kill the dragon. First thing we need to do though, is make the dragon perch on its pedestal. The best way to do that is hang around on the outskirts ne next to the pillars, which will increase the likelihood of the dragon perching. Also, then having an ender pearl in your inventory so you can teleport to the pedestal as soon as it goes into perch. This will save you a lot of time and hopefully make the dragon perch faster. Being up high like Kuroi in this speedrun will allow him to throw the ender pearl further, which is why he is up so high. Transfer all of the beds in your inventory into your hotbar slots so you can quickly transfer between them. Also keeping an ender pearl in one of those slots so you can teleport to the pedestal is also a great idea. Also, you're going to want to have at least one block in your inventory as well, which we're gonna be using in just a moment. So you see the dragon going into perch. Use your ender pearl, teleport to the pedestal and place your block down directly as Kuroi has done right here. Then place the beds on the pedestal right below where the dragon is going to land. Now you may notice a lot of lines and boxes on this world record run. By pressing F3 and B at the same time, you will turn on the hit boxes, which is what you can see on the screen, and it will help you to kill the dragon faster. As you can see, one cycling the dragon is a lot faster than breaking all of the crystals. So I'd recommend learning how to one cycle the dragon for your future speedruns. Now, I'm not going to be explaining the process of one cycling the dragon with these beds as it will make the tutorial a lot longer than it needs to be. The basic premise, however, is blowing up the beds as the dragon's head goes above the bed. This will allow you to kill it the fastest way possible instead of wasting time and blowing up the crystals. Make sure to subscribe and I'll explain it to you in a different tutorial.